Hello everyone. So we are doing our um, lab for introduction to Amazon EC2. Um, I have already clicked start lab. So we are just waiting for the AWS button to turn green. Um, so as you can see, there is one hour allocated to this lab. Um, as soon as it turns green, then the timer will start. So firstly, we will read um, some overview about what this lab is supposed to um, do or what we are supposed to create and monitor. Um, so this is our EC2, which is a web service that provides resizable compute capacity in the cloud. It is designed to make web scale cloud computing easier for developers. So by the end of this lab, we will be able to launch a web server with termination protection enabled. Uh, we are able to monitor our EC2 instance. We can modify the security group that our web server is using uh, by allowing HTTP access. We would be able to do vertical uh, scaling. That means uh, we can resize our Amazon EC2 instance to scale and uh, we will test the termination protection and we will then terminate our EC2 instance. So as you can see, the uh, AWS lab has turned green, so we are able to go into it and then click here. Um, so because I have just completed a lab, so it should, uh, it is asking me to log out. Now I am into the uh, console. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we should do is go to our EC2. If it's not on the main page of your recently visited, you go to your EC2 and you can search here. Yeah. And then the first thing that we would like to do is go to instances. Um, as you can see, there are no instances running. So click here. So next we go to launch instance uh, because we need to create uh, a new instance. So step one um, from the instruction, we need to name our EC2 instance um, in this uh, name and text pane, we enter web server. And then next we have to choose our AMI image. Um, So we have to choose Amazon Linux uh, 2 from the instruction. However, um, sometimes the instruction can be a bit outdated. So we need to choose the default uh, AMI. So as you can see, the default one that has been chosen for us is Amazon Linux 2023 AMI. So this is good for us to use. Okay. So next we go to choosing an instance type at the bottom. So we are supposed to choose T3 micro. So we can just click or type T3 micro because there are too many instance type. Okay, perfect. And key pair logging. We do not need to do anything for um, this lab because we won't be uh, requested to connect to SSH so we can just choose proceed without a key pair and then as for network settings um, please edit click edit here and then we need to choose lab VPC so so this has already been pre-configured for us or uh, created for us and then we do not need to do anything else. And for security group, we need to create a new security group and name it as web server security group. So this is the firewall that we are creating for our EC2 instance. So the description should be a security group for my web server. OK, 
okay um, for this purpose we have to remove it uh, we have to remove any inbound rules um, and then later on there will be some other configurations uh, that will allow us to play around with the rules for for now we should just uh, leave it as it is and then now we configure the storage um, we'll see if we need to do anything to the storage um, okay based on the instruction we leave the default storage as it is and next we go into advanced details so under advanced details we go to termination protection termination protection we click enable so this will um, not allowing us to terminate the EC2 instance so this is what we want to do um, at this stage and then the user the data we have to copy and paste um, the script that we have in the um, instructions so copy the following commands that will allow us to allow us to install an Apache web server, configure the web server to automatically start on boot, activate the web server and to create a simple web page. So we copy it here, copy and paste. Yeah. And that's it. So we launch our instance. Okay, so we have gotten a confirmation uh, that it has been successfully uh, launched. When we click here, we can uh, go right into our instance. So now we can see it is in the inst uh, running uh, state. Um, and we are just waiting for the status check to uh, to complete um, if you see on the instruction page it says two over two checks passed but um, based on the updated uh, system uh, it should be three over three checks passed so we are just waiting for that and we can refresh the instance um, and um, wait for it to be updated okay now after a few minutes we can see our status check has passed three over three then that's perfect and moving on we will go to monitoring tab um, it will show us how we can monitor our ec2 instance or the different ways so we scroll down and you can see um, your EC2 instance can be monitored by your cloud watch. There should be different um, grounds, your CPU utilization, your network in, network up. But because we have just launched our instance, nothing is uh, showing and that is fine. Okay, these are the different metrics. And then um, another way to see um, or to monitor our instance is by uh, going to monitor and troubleshoot and then to get instance screenshot. Yeah, so this will show you what your Amazon EC2 instance console would look like if it has a screen. So this is your instance. Mm -hmm. okay so this is useful because um, in cases where you are unable to reach your instance via SSH or RDP you can capture a snapshot of your instance and view it as an image like like this then you select cancel because we um, 
we just want to have a look at the monitoring okay so before we move on to task 3 uh, we have to copy and paste our public IPv4 address so you can see it here public IPv4 address just click here and then it will copy um, and then put it on your uh, notepad because um, it will be useful for us um, in next steps mm -hmm. and then when you do that um, try to open it in a web browser try to open a tab and then copy and paste it here we are trying to see what will show so as expected this site cannot be rich because we don't have any uh, inbound rules we do not allow any connections to go into the instance um, therefore now we go on to our uh, next steps which would be the security groups so we go to the left uh, navigation pane here and we go to security groups and as you can see um, there is the one that we have created web security group and then we click here and go to the uh, details at the bottom and we go to inbound rules as you can see there is no inbound rules we click edit inbound rules and then click add rule so for this uh, purpose we need to change the type um, we need to allow HTTP connection and then we go to source um, and then go anywhere IPv4 So that is the only thing that we need to change. We go save rules. Okay, so you will receive a notification to say inbound security group rules successfully modified on security group. So next, we go back to the uh, page that we have earlier, our public IPv4 address, and then we try to refresh this page and see what happens. So once you have uh, refreshed the page, uh, it should come out like this. You are able to see hello from your web server. This comes from the data script that we have um, put in when we launch our instance. So it means that any connection um, from your HTTP um, can come into your instance. All right, so we move on to the other um, task which is to resize your instance. Um, this is instance types and EBS volume. Uh, before you can resize an instance, you must stop it. So we go back to our instance on the left um, navigation pane, and then you need to stop it. Stop this instance. Okay, okay stop. And okay, so you once it has top yeah once it has top you go to actions and then you go to instant settings then you can uh, modify uh, or change instance type so you have it here change instance type so you can see the current instance type is T3 micro, so we need to change it to T3 small. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's it that we need to change. And the next thing that we need to do is to uh, resize the EBS volume. For this purpose, go to your left navigation menu and select volumes and it falls under elastic block store and as you can see um, there's already one volume and then we click this and we go to actions 
and we go to modify volume. So as you can see, currently we have 8 gigabytes. So we would like to change it to 10. We will now increase the size of this disk. Okay. And that is the only thing that we should be uh, changing. We go modify, modify. Okay, so the volume is being modified. That's great. Okay, if you can see, the size has changed, uh, which is good. So now we go back to our instance, go back to the left side and choose instance. And we want to restart the instance again. We go to instance state and start instance. So I'll just rename it as O. Oh, this is the previous previous lab. And you can always refresh it. Okay, it's okay. This one we can just wait for it to um, complete status check. But um, all in, we have completed the task to resize our instance type and our volume, which is great. Now, uh, the task would be to test our termination protection. We will try to terminate this and see whether um, it works or not. So we choose this um, instance and then we go to terminate. So if you can see, we come across this on an EBS back instance. The default action is for the root EBS volume to be deleted when the instance is terminated storage on all local drives will be lost and we have already enabled termination protection so let's see whether we are still able to terminate or not yeah as expected um there is the error um uh, code or error message to say that we failed to terminate the instance because we have the termination uh, protection enabled so for that purpose, now let's try and remove the termination uh, protection. We go to instant settings and the actions. We go to instant settings and we go to change termination protection. Okay, under termination protection, we click enable. That means we are disabling it. We click save. And now let's try without the protection whether we are able to terminate or not terminate okay okay now it is uh, successfully initiating the termination uh, as you can see our instance goes into shutting down mode um, and when it is completed it will go to terminated mode or terminated state Okay, great. That's about it. Thank you, everyone. We are now done with our first lab.